Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu, and I hope all is well with you. So, you know, being an old guy, Rusty just mentioned my beard, salt and pepper and all that. Um, guess it means I've been around for a little while and uh, with age often, hopefully, comes a little bit of wisdom. One of the things I wanna talk about today is when you're training, about being passive or being aggressive. Like in life, as you've kind of learned by now, uh, with the themes that we run here. Jiu-Jitsu really is just a microcosm of life in general. You know, success in Jiu-Jitsu often leads to somebody who's gonna be also successful in life as well. But being passive versus being aggressive, having that type of style, you know, should I have a, a passive style or should I have an aggressive style? They each have their time, but what happens is a lot of times we get caught in one mode or another. Right? Have you ever been in that situation where you're training and you know, you're so used to giving people stuff, giving people positions, letting people set up things on you, that when it comes time to actually get it into gear for yourself, you actually have a hard time doing it. You find you kind of have a habit of playing, you know, playing possum, I guess you could say, just letting people have stuff on you. And on the other hand, you're just so aggressive. You're always in beast mode that you have people not wanting to train with you, or you have people complaining that you're injuring them uh, because you're always just going so balls to the wall. With everything, you kind of need moderation, right? There are some days you need to be balanced and some days you need to be aggressive. And some days you need to be kind of a little bit of both. So if I'm teaching, for instance, and I find, you know, this could happen to me as well. If I'm teaching privates a lot, what I find is that I let my students have anything on me. Right, we could be working on something and I'm always letting them have what they want because time for the time for privates is really their time. It's not my time, right? They, they've, uh, they've allocated um, a portion of my time for their use. And when they're training with me, then let's say it's a, it's a guard passing day. You know, I'm just teaching them how to pass guard and I have to play guard and I have to let them pass my guard. You know, I have to give them certain openings that they can take advantage of that I taught them. So if I taught them a particular guard pass, I need to give them that opening so they can go and do it. Well, if you do it 10, 20, 30 times, guess what? I start to get in a mode of giving people that particular opening. So if I'm, in, I'm now training in class and I find that I'm kind of in a, in a habit of giving that thing up when I really shouldn't be giving it up. Another private session, it could be, I'm always letting people have the choke on me because why? I taught them how to set up chokes and how to find chokes and how to get chokes and how to finish chokes, all that kind of stuff. So I find that, you know, I may be letting people sneak another hand in there, in my collar when they really shouldn't be, but I'm in that mode, I'm too passive. On the other hand, you know, if, if I'm always aggressive, I'm always going for stuff on people and I'm always catching them, they're never gonna learn. People like to think to themselves that they need, they need to train with somebody better, somebody who can beat them all the time to get better. That's not true. Um, just getting your ass beat all the time doesn't make you better. It makes you get your ass beat. A lot of people, now certain people, there's a small slice of people, if you beat their ass all the time, their thinking is gonna be, I'm gonna figure out what you did to me, I'm gonna work it, and I'm gonna find the solution, and I'm gonna come and I'm gonna beat your ass back. Now, that's the way I was. So for me, it actually worked okay. But I know for most people, most people don't think like me. Most people wouldn't, you know, like I, like I told you in another, in another video, I don't remember which one, but when I come into jujitsu and I went there to learn how to fight and every day class was, chances are I was gonna get myself smashed, I was gonna get hit, um, but that's what I wanted. Whereas most people don't, you know, they, they think to themselves, you know, they don't know what they're getting into when they come into a class like that, but they wanna learn jujitsu. So my goal is to show them some passivity on the one hand, so they can kind of get stuff working. And on another day, I may show them a little bit of aggressiveness, but it's always dialed down. Because really at this point, there's no need to go really aggressive anymore. And besides me being older, it doesn't really pay off for me physically to do that. In your particular training style, you may be asking yourself, in fact, maybe you should, take an inventory of what you do. Am I passive or am I aggressive? Or if you find a nice balance, then great. If you, especially if you think about it, a lot of people, don't consciously think about it. Other people 
Yeah, and if you don't think about it, you're always passive. You're wondering, why am I always getting my ass kicked, right? You might think to yourself that when you do turn it up, your body is so used to being so relaxed that when you do turn it up, you get winded really quickly. You get tired really quickly. So you're, you're out of jujitsu shape. It really is what it is. So it makes sense for you to start to turn it up to stretch your, your cardio some, you know, stretch your ability some uh, to kind of push yourself because you've atrophied on that side. What is atrophy? Atrophy is like if you imagine your muscles, you know, your muscles growing when you, when you, when you do, when you're a bodybuilder, your muscles grow, that's hypertrophy. And if you, if you're a bodybuilder, but you stop lifting altogether, your muscles shrink, that's atrophy, right? So what you wanna do is with your cardio system, you wanna make your, your cardio system stop being so atrophied, being so small and underdeveloped. You wanna develop it, you wanna work it. Any part of your body, you have to work to make it better. If you want to be able to withstand pressure, you know, have people put pressure on you, your body will get used to it. If you want to be able to train hard for 20 minutes straight, just boom, 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 constantly without stopping. You know, you know, you might go through four or five opponents in that time, right? Just stop, just as soon as somebody comes in, you know, comes in, you train, as soon as you're done, they switch out, you keep going, then you're gonna work and do it for 20 minutes if that's what you wanna do, right? Most people can't do that, especially if you play that passive game. Passive game, maybe you relax or everything, but if you have an opponent who's particularly good or particularly aggressive, you're gonna find yourself starting to take it up too and you're gonna find yourself winded. You know, man, I can't do this. Right? On the other hand, if you're too aggressive, sometimes if you're, if you're too aggressive, you don't see openings because you're moving so quickly that, have you ever eaten something and, and uh, you were so hungry or it was so delicious that you just started to scarf it down, right? Nom, 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 nom. And your mom tells you, Ryan, slow down, right? Slow it down, you can't eat so much so quickly but you don't care, you just go. Well, what happens? You miss, you know, it could have been your favorite dish but being that you didn't really get to enjoy it, you just swallowed it. You, you're like, wow, you know, that was my favorite dish, but you know, I, I didn't really, I don't remember eating it. And the same thing happens, you know, let's say you're looking for arm bars, but you're moving so fast and so aggressively, you keep missing them, right? And you wonder, why do I keep missing the arm bars? You know, I, I know it's there, and the guy even told you, you know, my arm was there the whole time. You know, it could have been somebody, your instructor helping you, giving you the space to take the arm but you never take the arm, why? Because you're just moving so aggressively and so fast. And a lot of times when you're aggressive, you don't set anything up, right? You just, you're, being aggressive is good for being opportunistic, but what if there are no opportunities? You know, then being aggressive really doesn't get you all that much. So you need to learn how to slow it down so you can kind of set back and look and see what do I have available to me and of, let's say there's nothing. I have to learn, I have to, I have to figure out how to create an opportunity. So passive versus aggressive. Like in life, you want to play a balance. Take some days to be aggressive, take some days to be passive. Or take some opponents to be aggressive against today because you may not want to be aggressive against them tomorrow. Um, and take another partner that you're gonna be passive with, right? So I like to I like to kind of tell you what happened with me in my life. You know, there were uh, there are so many times uh, when I would train with, say, with Master Dave, comma, and for the most part, he'd be passive with me. But every once in a while, he'd be aggressive and I would pay for it. And I'm like, what the heck just went on there? Well, and he explained it to me. He goes, that was my day that day. So all the other days I would give to you, but today I took it for myself, right? So it was his centering himself back. So playing a passive game, letting me find opportunities, giving me opportunities to, to take an arm, to choke him or whatever is, is what he would give me for the most part. But then every once in a while, he'd go and destroy me. And it wasn't to, to let me know that he could destroy me. It was just to, to get him, get his aggressiveness back in so he just doesn't lose it, right? It wasn't, it wasn't to show me who's boss because I already know who's boss, right? So it came down to really for his own training and so now i do that as well so certain times i'll play very passive in fact most of the time i play pretty passive because i want to help everybody i want to teach them i want them to learn so if i'm training you know if i'm if i'm in teaching a class and i and i train with say five people that night i'm let's say that I'm, i want them all to learn so i'll be passive the whole night but then we'll have a day where we get together and um i'll just go after them Right? And then they're gonna go, whoa, you know, I don't remember this. You know, you never train like that. You know, they, they almost forgot that I could do it. 
but it was a day that was my day that I took. <clears throat> and it didn't even cross my mind for me to, to make them remember that I can still do it. It was just one day I just thought, you know what? It's been a while since I've been aggressive. Time to turn up the meter to eight, right? And then and just be aggressive and just, you know, go for something. And that way I can maintain my sharpness as well. You know, I can maintain my vision and being able to see things that's going on. And at the same time, I can practice taking them at that instant rather than doing it in a slow passive way. So, but you can, I can, you can only do it with more advanced guys. You can't do that with, with uh, beginner guys or even white belts for that matter, because they don't know what's happening. They, the white belts don't necessarily know how to defend themselves. Maybe the, maybe the more advanced ones, but when you get to, to blue belts and purple belts and, and stuff, then they know how to defend themselves. So you can, you can kind of go after them a little bit more. That's the whole nutshell on whether you should play passive or aggressive. I hope that helps you. And I hope that helps kind of clarify things. You know, if not for you, maybe you're fine, but maybe for your training partners, you have one that's maybe just too passive or one that's too aggressive. Have a talk with them and, and let them know. Um, you know, and I'm gonna go into another video about, you know, sometimes though, but you gotta be careful about how you talk to people because sometimes they don't wanna know. Um, but, but have a talk with them and, and kind of point things out uh, if it's somebody that, that is open to hearing it, and then that'll help everybody. You know, then, then people can, can kind of take turns being the aggressive one and being the passive one. In other words, you can take turns being the nail and being the hammer. Me as, a, as an instructor and, and trying to make sure that people are learning right, you know, I'm the nail a lot of times. So, uh, but every once in a while, then I, I, gotta, I gotta take the hammer out. So anyway, that's all I got for you. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, or if you don't like it, go thumbs down. We always get one, of two, one or two of you guys, right? And uh, be sure to hit the bell so you can get notified of future videos. And we've got a bunch of other projects going on. So I don't know if you noticed, but the amount of videos have been kind of, you know, slowing down a little bit. Uh, but we're, we're, we're still thinking about you, but we will get some, some videos out. Also, we're putting a lot of videos back on the Patreon channel. So if you haven't seen any of those videos, you might want to go check it out. Uh, it doesn't cost that much. And it goes over a lot of the technical aspects of Kama Jiu Jitsu that, uh, that a lot of people ask us about and uh, really cool stuff, but connection and all that kind of good stuff. All right, take care, happy training, bye-bye now.